Hansen and Totomayak, Tiana Mustus Lafferty, Nitsi Kasson, and I'm here with my daughter. Layla. Who's that? Layla. <laughs> I'm here with my daughter Layla, and we're back in our happy place, uh, Miyogisagal. It's it's a really nice day, but it is probably one of the more colder days that we've been here, mm -hmm. and it is snowing quite a bit, which is probably one of the first times it snowed since we've been here. So we want to welcome you. Thanks for coming and joining us. And uh, we brought our tobacco and we did an offering as we normally do. So um, we're really excited to share with you all the things we're learning about this new moon. All right, and last moon, Yogi Piwipi Sim, we challenged them to find out more about woodpeckers, squirrels and their crazy behavior, and also chickadees, right? We really like chickadees. So did you find out more about these animals? What did you learn? we learned more about woodpeckers was that um, the drumming and the tapping they do on trees is to get food but it's also to announce their presence and you'll know what kind of woodpecker it is just by hearing that that sound the second thing we learned is that um, woodpeckers have helmets did you know that <laughs> yeah. woodpeckers have helmets around their heads uh, they like to play it safe and so they actually have like a spongy bone around their brain that protects them from all that tapping and drumming. So it's like they have helmets and they don't even know it. And the third thing that was really cool, the woodpecker's beak is super cool. It's their superpower, but their real superpower is what? Their tongue. They have the most interesting tongues and they're the longest tongues I've ever seen. And I, I learned this about woodpeckers. What is it? Um, that they have a long tongue all the way up to here, to all the way over here. Yeah, and we'll show you a picture, okay? Also, we spotted squirrels everywhere. I feel like the more we started thinking about squirrels, the more we started to see them, and we even have some in our backyard, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we like to put peanuts out for the squirrels to eat. But uh, we have a video that we want to show you of a squirrel we found and I think it had food and in this video let's see if you could spot that squirrel. It's really actually hard to find. I, I also learned that squirrels, yes, they can jump really fast and they can sprint down trees like we talked about, but they can jump really, really far. They can jump 10 times their body length. That would be like me jumping 55 feet. And uh, maybe you can find out how many feet you could jump. Get your teacher or parent to measure that and see how, how close you can get to how far squir squirrels jump, which would be about 10 feet. You think you can jump 10 feet? Hi there, it's Leia Joy Love for Team Easy Kesson. And this is my mama, Tiana. That's it. Uh, well, it is a change of scenery. And what Leila and I had discovered is that I can endure the cold weather and Leila can endure the cold weather. But guess what? Technology can't. So phones get cold and they shut off. So we weren't even able to finish our oh, video. video. <laughs> so, so here we are. So we're going to continue just as we were there. We also have a nice fire going. So we're nice and warm, aren't we? Away from all the wind. Um, so we wanted to talk a little bit more about chickadees and just how resilient and awesome and strong they are. But I did learn a few things about chickadees as well. One thing we learned about chickadees was that uh, they have a language. They have their own language that tells other chickadees what they're saying. And one thing they say, they have a special song. Do you remember how it goes? Chickadee dee dee, chickadee dee dee. Yeah, so chickadees actually sound like their name and they go chickadee dee dee. And more, the more D's that are at the end of their song, like chickadee dee dee, the more D's you hear, the more in danger they are. Or they might be trying to say that there's a predator around. So if, you're he if you hear them go chickadee dee 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 dee, the more D's, the more in trouble they might be. 
And another interesting thing was that chickadees mate for life. Do you remember what that means? No. <laughs> they have a boyfriend or they have a girlfriend or a wife or a husband for the rest of their lives. <laughs> they stay together their whole entire lives. They're very committed to their chickadee partners, which I thought was really nice. I'm going to put up a few other um, chickadee facts that your parent or teacher can read for you. Which the facts are really good. Winters, winters are a time for survival and especially for chickadees and they're they're very small but they're mighty and uh, one thing I learned was that in the winter months they still rely a lot on spiders and dormant insects uh, but a lot of their energy sources in the winter come from feeders so the feeders that people leave out for them so Layla and I made a feeder and we're gonna hang it and see if some of the chickadees like it so I'll show you a picture of what Layla's look like. Oskagotsin. It's a new moon. And uh, this is a really exciting moon. It is Pawataganga Sisi Pisim. I think that's the longest one we've had so far. So we'll try and say it together, okay? Pawatag. Pawatag. Inasi. Nasi. Si. Si. Pisim. Pisim. Pawa tag. Pawa tag. Inasi. Inasi. Si. Si. Pisim. Pisim. Pawa tag. Pawa tag. Inasi si. Inasi si. Pisim. Pisim. Pawa tag inasi si pisim. Pawa tag inasi si pisim. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Again, good Cree speaker here. Pawataganga Sisi Pisim translates in English to frost exploding tree moon. Frost exploding tree moon. That's quite a name. And I wonder why First Nations people, Cree people long ago, would have named it that. Do you know? I think you know a little bit. So. There's, there's liquid in uh, trees. There's a liquid or sap inside every tree. And that liquid is nice and warm. And then at night in the winters when it gets really, really cold, you know what happens to liquid when it, when it freezes? It expands. So that liquid inside the tree, it expands and it goes, it makes the tree crack. And all of those cracks in the tree is what is formed during this time. It gets so cold that that liquid inside just starts to crack. How cool would that be to listen to that cracking uh, in the middle of the night? There's a few things I'm learning about Pawataganga Sisi Pisim or Frost Exploding Tree Moon. And um, that is that there is some berries that remain, but there's a bird called a bo Bohemian Waxwing. And these types of birds come around this time and they flock in the hundreds and they're all looking for all of those berries that are left. Particularly, they're looking for mountain ash or high bush cranberries. And these, these birds are very resilient and strong. They like the cold winters. Sometimes you'll see them um, in hundreds in, in some of the trees. This is what a wax wing looks like. This is what a wax wing sounds like. This is what mountain ash trees look like. And this is what high bush cranberries look like in the spring or summer and also in the winter. Okay, now that it's winter and the snow is on the ground, you know what that means? Mm -mm. You don't know what that means? Mm -mm. You don't know what that means? No. <laughs> it means we can tell stories. And traditionally, Cree people waited until winter to tell stories. And there's, there's many different reasons for that. And I'll, I'm going to list some of them so you can talk about them with your teacher or your parent about why during winter would First Nations people wait to tell their stories.
So since it's time to tell stories, I want to share a story about a Taga piece or Little Spirit. And the story is told by Wilfred Buck. So I'm very grateful to Wilfred for sharing this story. You remember this story, hey? Yeah. About the little boy in the moon? Yeah. Uh, so this is a story of a Taga piece. Taga piece is Little Spirit. Atsaka Pasis. And Little Spirit stands on the moon. When the moon is full, Wabiye we call that, Wabiye Pisum, the full moon, it is circular, it is round. And during that time, we can see a Chaga Pis standing on the moon. And the way he got there, we're told was that long ago, there was a family, and something happened to that family. And all the family died, except for one little boy. So one little boy was lonely in the village. And uh, it was decided that he would uh, have to go live with other people. And so the people were asked who would look after this boy. And so one family stood up and said, we'll take him, we'll look after him, and we'll care for him. And so Chagapis went to live with uh, these people. But what, ha what happened was uh, they didn't treat him very well. They saw him as a uh, free labor. And uh, they saw him as, uh, he's the one who could do things that nobody else wanted to do. And eventually they, uh, they, they wanted him to do everything. So all the jobs he had to do, everything he had to do, he had to do all the work. It didn't matter what hour of the day it was, it didn't matter what, uh, how the weather was like outside, he was sent to do everything, Chagapis. And he was always cold because he, he wore raggedy clothes, raggedy hides, and he was always hungry because he was underfed, and he stayed in a ratty old tent behind uh, the main teepee. And so uh, he was unloved, he was unwanted. And so one, one night during a, a blizzard, he was sent to go out to the lake to chop a hole in the ice <clears throat> and get water. So he did that, and as he was uh, chopping a hole in the ice, the blizzard broke and he stood there and there was a full moon. And he looked up that full moon and he looked at Grandmother Moon, Tipiskawi Pisum, and he started crying. He said, ah, Nogum, I, I'm, I'm pitiful, Nittamagi, and I feel very unloved, I feel very cold, I feel very hungry. I feel very unwanted and I feel very abused and I'm so scared, he said. And so Grandmother Moon listened to a story and uh, she felt sorry for him and she took pity on him. And so she sent uh, Chagapi, she lifted up his spirit and she took him up to live with her in the, uh, on the moon. So when the moon is full, you can look up and you can see a Chagapi standing there. He's standing on the moon with two pails of water. What a beautiful story. Thank you again to Wilfred Buck for, for sharing that story. And there's so much we can learn about Ataga Peace and the way that we can treat people, especially during this time of year. You, you would be lucky to hear those cracks in the trees as they happen, and I'm sure they probably happen late at night. But our next challenge just is to see if you can spot large cracks in trees. That would be really neat, wouldn't it? Mm. The other thing is I just want you to consider what we can learn from trees. You know, just like trees, we too have cracks and we break, but what do we learn from it? And I feel like we can gain something from understanding the strength of trees. And last, try to find a mountain ash or try to find a high bush cranberry and try to see if you can spot the rest of what is left out there for berries. Uh, see if you can get a picture of a wax wing somewhere. Try to make a bird feeder like I did. That's the last challenge. Try to make a bird feeder just like she did. And I'm going to post the instructions actually in the comments of the video. Well, hi, hi. I want to thank you again for joining us. I'm so grateful that we were still able to do this. I know we're not in our place, but we were, we did our best. And uh, now we have this warm fire to enjoy. So thank you for, for joining us and uh, we'll see you next moon. Exit. Hi, hi.